say you want to divide a polynomial by another polynomial. Often people are taught a method to do this called long division, which looks something like this. But I find this method quite confusing, and in fact there's a different method that I think is a lot easier and quicker to do. Let me show you how to solve this first question here using this alternative method. So we want to divide x squared plus 4x plus 3 by x plus 1. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the thing we're dividing by down the side. We're going to write x and plus 1 like this and draw a line next to them. The next thing we're going to draw is a line at the top here. On top of this line, we're going to have the answer to this question. If we're dividing a quadratic term, so a term with an x squared in, by a linear term, so a term with an x, our resulting answer is going to be of the form x plus something. So we want to leave space on the top for an answer of the form x plus something. So we need to leave two spaces here. Inside this grid, we want all of the terms to add up to the thing that we're dividing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw some diagonal bubbles inside this grid. So our first bubble looks like this. Our second bubble looks like this. And our third bubble looks like this. Now what we do is we start in the top left corner. We want this term here to be x squared, so we write that in. What we have here is actually a multiplication grid. We want the term up here multiplied by this term to equal this term. So what times by x gives us x squared? Well, x does. So x is going to go here. And this is a multiplication grid, so we can fill in this gap here now. x times plus 1 is plus x. Now we move to our second bubble. We want this second bubble to add up to plus 4x. So we've already got plus x here. So to get to plus 4x, we need to add 3x. And again, this is a multiplication grid, so what do we put up here so that this term times by x is plus 3x? Well, we need plus 3 to go here. And we're actually now done. The answer to our question is x plus 3 because we've filled out our top line. However, we can still fill in this final bubble, and this final bubble sort of serves as a check that we've done everything correct. We need this bubble to add up to plus 3. But the contents of this bubble are already determined by plus 3 times plus 1, because it's a multiplication grid. And plus 1 times plus 3 is plus 3, which is what we needed. So that shows us that we haven't made any mistakes, we've done the right thing. So this expression on the top is our answer. x squared plus 4x plus 3 divided by x plus 1 is x plus 3. And as a side note, remember, you can always check your answers to polynomial divisions because we should have that x plus 1 times by x plus 3 equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. And by doing some quick workings, we can see that indeed this is the case. So that's just a second check that we've got the right answer. Let's try the second question here. So we're dividing this polynomial by x minus 5. So we're going to write x minus 5 down the side. And then we draw a line here. And then we're going to draw a line across the top. But first we're going to think about how long it needs to be. So what do we need to multiply a term that just has a single x in by to get to x cubed? And the answer is going to be a quadratic. Because remember we add powers of polynomials when we multiply them together. So in our answer we're going to have an x squared term an x term, and then a constant term, just a number here. So our answers are quadratic. Now remember, we want all the terms inside here to add up to x cubed minus 3x squared minus 50, the thing we're dividing. Now we draw our diagonal bubbles to fill up this grid. So the first bubble is always just a single one, so that's just a bubble here. And then we're going to have to have a bubble this shape, followed by one this shape, they always have to be diagonal bubbles. And then the final bubble is also always a single bubble like this. We start in the top left bubble. So we want this bubble to be x cubed. So we write x cubed in. Now it's a multiplication grid. So to get to x cubed from x, we need to multiply it by x squared. 
then we can fill in this space here, minus 5 times x squared is minus 5x squared. Now we need this second bubble to add up to the second biggest term, which is the minus 3x squared. So remember to look carefully whether it's a plus or a minus in front of the term. So we want minus 3x squared in this bubble. To get to minus 3x squared from minus 5x squared, we need to add 2x squared. Now we can fill out this section of our multiplication grid. To get from x to plus 2x squared, we need to multiply it by plus 2x. Now let's fill out this square. Minus 5 times plus 2x is minus 10x. Now we want this bubble to add up to the x term of this expression. Well, actually, be careful here because there is no x term. There's sort of an invisible plus 0x here. This is the same as x cubed minus 3x squared plus 0x minus 50. So you need to be really careful here because we want this bubble to add up to plus 0x. We don't want it to add up to minus 50 because that's for this bubble. So keep an eye out for any hidden terms like this x term here. So to get 0x from minus 10x, we need to add 10x. And that means we need a plus 10 to go here. And you can see we've already filled out our top line, so we have our answer. But we can do the final bubble to check. Minus 5 times plus 10 is minus 50. And we see it is indeed the final term here. So that shows us that we've done everything correctly. So the answer to this division is x squared plus 2x plus 10. Let's try the next question. So this looks a bit more intimidating because we have a quartic equation at the top. So this is the kind of question I definitely wouldn't want to be doing with long division because that would be really complicated, I think. But using this method, it's actually quite straightforward. So again, what we do is we write the thing we're dividing by down the side. This time it's a quadratic. And then we're going to draw a line across the top. We need to think about how long we want this line. So how can we make a quartic, an equation with x to the 4 in, from an equation with x to the power of 2 in? Well, we need to multiply this term by another quadratic because x squared times x squared will give us x to the power of 4. So this needs to be a quadratic on the top. So we need an x squared term, an x term, and then a constant term, a number term here. And remember, we want all the terms inside the grid to add up to the thing we're dividing. Next up, we draw our bubbles. So the top left square is always a bubble on its own. And then in order to make diagonal bubbles, we're going to have to have one here. We're going to have one here, one like this and one like this. Now we want this first bubble here to be the first thing here. So we want this to be x to the power of 4. And because it's a multiplication grid, we therefore need this term to be x squared. Then we can fill out the two squares here. So minus 9x times x squared is minus 9x cubed. And this one here is plus 2x squared. Now we need this second bubble to add up to the second thing here, which is minus 9x cubed. Ah, so we've already got minus 9x cubed in this bubble. So we want this to be a zero because we've already reached the term that we want. So what times by x squared gives us zero? Well, zero does. So that tells us there's no x term. There's sort of an invisible plus zero x in our answer. So we can fill out this column here so 0 times by minus 9x will be 0, and 0 times 2 will be 0. Now we can look at our third bubble. We want the terms in this bubble to add up to the next term along, so minus 2x squared. We currently have plus 2x squared, so we're going to have to subtract 4x squared. That means at the top here, we're going to have to have minus 4 minus 4 times x squared is minus 4x squared. And we've actually already got our answer because we've filled in the top row. But now we can just fill in these two bubbles to check anyway. So minus 4 times minus 9x is going to be 36x. 
and then hopefully 0 plus 36x is 36x, which is what we wanted. So that's a good sign. Minus 4 times plus 2 is minus 8, which is the final term that we wanted. So again, another good sign. So the answer to this division is x squared plus 0x minus 4, which is the same as just x squared minus 4. So that's the answer. Finally, let's try this super scary looking one here, which again isn't so bad with this new technique. So down the side, we want this term that we're dividing by. So we've got x cubed. And now we need to be careful because there's an invisible x squared term here. You always need to be on the lookout for missing terms. So we jump here from an x cubed to an x term. We're missing the x squared term. So there's sort of a plus zero x squared term or just plus zero. But we need to include this on the left hand side or else things will get a bit weird. Then we have a plus x and a plus one. And we draw a line down the sides. Now, how long does our line above here need to be? So to get to a quintic, a polynomial with x to the power of five in, from a cubic, we're gonna have to multiply this cubic by a quadratic because three plus two is five. So we're gonna have a quadratic term up here as our answer. So we're gonna have an x squared term, an x term and a constant term, a number term here. So as usual, we want all the terms inside the grid to add up to the thing that we're dividing. Then we draw on our diagonal bubbles. So the top left corner is always a bubble of its own. And then we need one like this. And the final square is always a bubble on its own too. So this first bubble needs to be x to the power of 5. So we can write that in. To get to x to the power of 5 from x cubed, we need to multiply it by x squared. We can now fill in this column. So that's going to be 0 x cubed and plus x squared. The next bubble along needs to be minus 7x to the power of 4. We currently have a 0 here, which means that this term here has to actually be minus 7x to the 4 itself. To get to minus 7x to the power of 4 from x cubed, we need to multiply by minus 7x. Now we can fill in this column. We now need this third bubble to add up to the x cubed term here. So that's plus 12x cubed. We currently have a plus x cubed, so we need to add 11x cubed. To get to 11x cubed from x cubed, we need to multiply it by plus 11. So we've already got our answer. We've filled out the top line. So the answer is x squared minus 7x plus 11. But let's just quickly double check that we're correct. So we can fill in this column now. So plus x squared minus 7x squared is minus 6x squared, which is what we wanted minus 7x plus 11x is plus 4x, which is what we wanted. And finally, we end up with plus 11 at the end, like we wanted as well. So that's just a check that we are correct. So the answer to this big scary division is x squared minus 7x plus 11. So I hope you find this method useful. This is the method that I always use to solve these kind of questions. And it's the method that my maths A-level teacher taught me. But having done a lot of tutoring since then, I've realised that lots of students don't know about this method and always do the long division method instead. So I really wanted to share this with you in case you haven't seen it and in case it makes your life a bit easier. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more aesthetic, massy videos, do check out my channel and subscribe.